Please stand and pray. As our uh, <coughs> budget meeting, I'll lead us in prayer. Almighty God, we acknowledge that we have a responsibility to look after your creation, especially this region we call by Calden Regional Council. We are conscious that our decisions are going to affect deeply the people we have come here to serve. Assist us to exercise respect for councillors, staff, and for the people of our region. Help us in this meeting to act wisely, justly, and intelligently in all our deliberations. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of both leading and serving, and assist us to do these well. Councillors, yes, we have condolences uh, to mark the passing of uh, Jack Thompson, Mr. Robert Thompson, uh, Bark Alden, and Marcia Tills, formerly of Alpha. Webster. Webster. Yes. Oh, sorry. Marcia Tills, Webster. No, Marcia, we do. Well, yeah, yeah, sort of. Need. Are there any others that we may not have or may not have been made aware of? Marks that we observe a moment of. Councillors, uh, one of the more, if not some people would suggest the, but it's certainly one of the more important responsibilities uh, that any council undertakes is today's meeting um, regarding the budget and budget adoption. Um, so as we start that, I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land upon which we meet and our elders, their elders, both past, present and emerging. Um, and as a emerging leader within the Buckhorn Regional Council, um, today is Shane's first meeting, uh, formally sitting in the chair as CEO. So, um, on behalf of all of you and, and our broader rate players, um, I'd just like to welcome you formally, Shane, um, to the role of CEO and wish you all the very best of luck um, in your tenure as our CEO. Um, yeah, so, thank you. Thank you. And, um, I can express the last two weeks has been nothing but um, getting to know the local community, lots of warm welcomes, and I've really enjoyed the first two weeks. And I'm very grateful to be part of this community. Thank you. Councillors, so today, um, before we move to the formal written business, I just want to um, point out a couple of different things about the meeting procedure. Uh, you have extensive budget support documents uh, with you. Uh, that have been provided uh, as both part of this meeting but also as part of our uh, workshops. However, I am aware that there is a whole trove of information here. There is no need for speed in any element of this. Um, if there's a document that you can't, if we refer to a budget item and for some reason it's not loading on your devices or you just ask and Samad is here, um, Debbie, between them, Debbie and Samad will be able to bring that up and we will drill down. Even though we've workshopped this, there is no need to hasten. In fact, I would suggest we can hasten slowly to make sure that you are, even if, I'm not suggesting we're all going to agree on every resolution, that's not the role, but I want you to be very clear about what it is that you're voting on when we vote on it. Um, and if there's an amendment or change that you're, you're very clear of what those amendments or changes may be. And, and I know there will be some discussion around two key areas, predominantly around um, uh, housing and around uh, showground use, uh, showground charges. So I know those, uh, there will be discussion when we get to that. We will tease it out. Um, once we've reached a position, we'll bring it to the vote and vote on it. But just 
make sure that if there's something you're not sure about that you ask us to bring it up because I don't I don't want you to feel like that we're rushing it all or because it can when we've got 19 separate resolutions it can just roll through and you don't want to be the one to put your hand up and say oh, I need some more help with that please so um, now is the time or when we get to each one is the time to say look I need you to pull that up please um, you will also note uh, following that um, uh, budget report is a number of um, uh, general business, uh, sorry, general resolutions relating more so to general meeting. Uh, there, as was indicated to you in the cover note for the agenda um, by Debbie, that there is a number of traditional reports that would appear that may not be here today. Um, that's not signalling a change in agenda production. It is simply that we only met two weeks ago and officers have been extremely busy getting both the budget together, um, new CEO. Uh, so, so those standard monthly reports will return for our July meeting. Um, there will be very little information in them that would be of relevance. That, and, and, and if officers have got anything, I will throw to them uh, when we get to questions on notice at the end um, before before I ask councillors for questions on notice, I'll ask the officers if they have anything that they wish to draw to our attention. Um, you will note that there is no report <coughs> regarding the questions on notice from the last meeting because once again, it has only been 14 days since we met. So they will be provided in full um, and perhaps some, perhaps even out of session. Um, if those answers come together, we will provide that obviously as a report for the July meeting, but if we have answers coming forward, we'll circulate that to councillors at that time. If for some reason we encounter some technical difficulty on a particular resolution in terms of bringing up um, support material, rather than move through formal um, motions to suspend standing orders and go to another agenda item, with your leave, I will just verbally suggest that we leave that agenda item and move on to the next one and come back to it, rather than continually suspending and returning and will get lost in procedural resolutions and the intent of what we're discussing will be lost. So um, because this is a unique agenda, um, not the other 11 that we have, um, I will seek your leave to uh, just deal with that in a little bit more informal method, but one that might help us and help Debbie keep track of where we're at rather than 47 different motions unrelated to the actual agenda item. Okay, so with that preface, uh, I now call for, now bear in mind, councillors, that none of you, none of you can have a conflict of interest in a budget. So we're only talking about agenda items 3.2 onwards. Declarations of prescribed conflict of interest. Starting with Councillor Rogers this time. Councillor Plum. Mr. Mayor, I don't believe so. Councillor. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, I inform the meeting that I prescribe conflict of interest in the following matters as defined by section 150E of Local Government Act 2009. The nature of my interest is as follows Item 3.3.1, the bitumen supply tender for Barcall Road, change 1665. Uh, the issue is a close associate of mine is likely to supply associated goods to the works. Uh, the name of the close associate is Michael Orman Transport and the nature of the relationship is as they are my employer. And also 3.3.2, gravel supply shoulder works on the Aramac Torrance Creek Road. Uh, as a close associate of mine is a tenderer. Uh, that close associate is Michael Orman Transport and they are my employer. In accordance with section 150 EM of the Local Government Act 2009, I will leave the meeting, stay away from the meeting while the matter is discussed and not invoked. Thank you, Councillor Mother. I should have, sorry, uh, I had sought in further advice from officers regarding Agenda Item 333 because you will see on pages 7 and 8 of the supporting material that a local Buckholden business is engaged in that. That business is not named. Um, we are not in closed session and we possibly, I don't want to preempt Council's decision about whether we do enter closed session. Um, Suffice to say that business is not one that any of you councillors have previously disclosed a conflict of interest in. Um, so I do not believe personally as a councillor that any of you do have. So for example, yourself councillor, like it's not 
somebody that you've previously disclosed as a close associate. So it's a, it is an existing buckle of business, but not one that this room has ever had to use as a COI before. So, um, but should, at the point that we do discuss that, I will ask if council wishes to discuss that in closed session, at the point we go into closed session, I will ask the officers to disclose who that business is, and then if you wish to repeat or reaffirm a COI one way or the other, that will be the time to do it, if you're Good. comfortable with it. Because it threw you, Mr. Mayor, my, my review of that, it didn't include anything that I assumed I have a COI with. A lot of it was electrical. There is infrastructure there, but it's volume, not together, electrical components, training. I look at that with your particular in circumstance in non council <coughs> and I couldn't in any way, work, apart from that <coughs> reference to a local bucket of business because it wasn't specified, but I spoke with the director of works about half an hour ago, and I've got the name, <coughs> certainly not to be that you've ever had to have an issue with that before. Thank you. And, and nor has any other councillor. <coughs> councillor Hinton. Not that I'm aware of, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Please. Not that I'm aware of. Councillor Peoples. No, not that I'm aware of. Councillors, uh, I, I'm not in any way disclosing a conflict of interest to you, but I am going to point it out because it says the Mayor. So agenda item 321. Uh, I'm happy if anyone wishes to raise whether they think I have a conflict of interest in that. Um, the report's there, it's certainly not a holiday, I guarantee you four days, most of which will be in a bullet train or a plane, but uh, not discussing the validity of my visit, uh, it's just whether you believe I have a conflict of interest. Uh, I've sort of advised from officers, I don't believe I do, uh, but we're in your hands if you wish for me to leave the room while that's discussed, then so be it. Okay. I now call for, does any councillor present believe any other councillor present has a prescribed conflict of interest that they have not previously disclosed. I now call for councillors to declare declarable conflicts of interest, starting with you, Councillor Beckles. I don't think I have this to be, no. Councillor Gleeson. I don't believe so, Mr Mayor. Councillor Hanson. I don't believe so, Mr Mayor. No, Mr Mayor. Councillor Arthur, Councillor Plum. Councillor Rogers. Yes, Mr Mayor, I have a declarable conflict of interest in three points. Unless you have a different agenda to us, I think you're talking about 352. 352, is it? Yeah, is that right, Shane? There's only a 352, there's not a 352. Yes, I've changed the after. It's oh. changed after, sorry. Oh, okay, sorry. 3.2. Okay, because you have a related person as a subject to that race. Okay? Yeah. And you're leaving? Does any councillor present believe any councillor present other councillor present has a previously undisclosed declarable conflict of interest? No, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. We can turn different pages. We can talk bigger than that. Okay. All right. The minutes, please, of the main meeting. Can I have somebody move that they be received? Councillor Plum, seconded. Councillor Hanson, those in favour? Seven zero. Are there any uh, alterations, errors, or omissions that councillors would like to point out? There, in the absence of that, is there somebody prepared to move that they be confirmed? Councillor Gleeson moved. Councillor Plum second. Those in favour? 7 0. Mm -hmm. Do any officers or councillors present have a petition in the correct style to present? So, Matt, um, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, agenda item 311, the statement of estimated financial position. And I have a resolution to receive that before questions and comments, please. Councillor Peoples moved. Councillor Arthur seconded. Those in favour? Carry. Where we are adopting, so this follows that comment my commentary earlier, councillors, where we're receiving a report that informs the budget process, we will move to receive it, then discuss it. Where we're adopting a fed schedule of fees and charges, I will allow discussion. 
If there's clearly going to be the need for formal debate, we will then call for a mover. We will then seek amendments or, to the contrary, seek formal debate. So I'll allow that ad hoc discussion. But for these, the likes of this report, which I'll now throw to Sam Ad and Jane, is there anything they'd like to draw out before I go to questions? Together. It looks consistent with the estimates that the council has worked on. So I think we take it as read and take questions and some that can answer the questions. Mm -hmm. Slightly better, so I than we had uh, received on the 30th of May. Yes, Mr. Mayor, it's, it's a more clear representation of where we will be at the end of the year. And it's, it's better than what we were projecting on the 26th of May. Is delivered as of 8th of June and estimated to end of year. Well, questions, councils? <laughs> oh, no, in the absence of questions, just while you're Preparing, uh, which draw a couple of key uh, figures there. Uh, cash is an extremely important element of any bank account, and uh, you will note that the estimated cash position of this council on the 30th of June is $13,026,626. Um, it is estimated that there will be uh, net $4 million in reduction from where we're at today. Uh, so our cash position today is $17,050,000 with a few dollars. Uh, so there will be a reduction, it is estimated, a net reduction of $4 million between now and, and the end of the financial year. I'd also point out um, that our borrowings uh, will, will draw down as payments draw down. Um, so there's close to half a million dollars in payments or in reduction due, um, which will be our borrowings. You know, traditionally or historically low position, which we're obviously talking about a little bit later when we get to the debt recovery, I think, sorry, to the debt statement. Um, but just looking at that statement of estimated position, there's clearly a substantial payment that some had or Jenny still uh, left on a, on a loan that must be due to be paid out sometime, or not paid out, but paid off in the next couple of months. But the, an annual interest payment or something? Yes, Mr. Mayor, it's to do with the interest and all this. Journals we do at the end of the year. Okay. Councillor Arthur, did I interrupt you? No, I was. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. No, just um, <clears throat> if there is a simple, relatively simple, quick explanation as to why we've gone <clears throat> technically backwards in cash, 5.2 million. Like, is that predominantly uh, like? the masses of amounts of flood damages paid well in advance. Um, just so that the, the people that watch the video will read the minutes, don't see, don't think that we are just hemorrhaging $5.2 million in cash in the last 12 months. Or, yeah. so, if that's at all possible. Through you, Mr. Mayor. It's, uh, so we are better off than what we were last year because that $18 million and about 8.3 million of contract assets, which were like restricted component, which had about 7.2 million of flood damage money in it. So, whereas this 13 million has about a million dollar of restricted component and some facts received in uh, advance. But in that answers the question is like, this is a better opposition than last year where we had restricted component of about 7.2 million in flood damage. Yep. That's why that figure was exaggerated. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you, Sam. Yeah, it's not just as simple as getting the ATM receipt and seeing how much cash is at bank. It's <coughs> what percentage of that cash has restricted elements. I mean, there's, all, there's always going to be an element of cash restriction due to things like employee entitlements and long service leave provisions. But it's that's a, that's a known cost of business. It's those ones that you've pointed out around flood damage that certainly 
have a immediate short term turnaround in cash where you can remember as you say five point two million dollars in twelve months, but really it wasn't there. We were the banker for the federal and state governments. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't mobile cash, it was train yeah. Okay. I think if uh, I understand councillors have been through these statements now a number of times, so they're reaffirming their position on this. Agenda item 312, this deals with uh, differential general rate categories of council. Uh, councillors, you see the resolution there. Um, uh, Councillor Peoples, you're prepared to move that? Yeah. Seconded. Councillor Plunk, <coughs> debate or discussion, please. This is the resolution that creates all of the individual categories which we will, in a subsequent resolution, then apply a rating charge to. It also uh, formally delegates the decision-making power to the CEO as per, as per the Local Government Act to um, identify the rating category per parcel of land to which one applies to which block. I don't believe there's any additions this year, so I'll make just a clarification around um, a few issues around multi-industrial, which was added last year for buildings, uh, sorry, complexes such as the Brez, and intensive accommodation. Was that the other one that we tweaked slightly? Yeah. Yes, Mr. Man, the coal. Oh, that's right, and coal mine, correct. Yeah, they were revised last year and categorised like that. No changes in the last two minutes. If you note that, no. as Debbie has on your screen there now, Council, is on page 12 of your agenda that these three things have been teased out with specific reference to identifying intensive accommodation, integrated coal mine, and tourist facilities. And that's following on from your last substantial budget workshop in this respect, wanting to seek some clarity around those where they may, especially with the latter two, where there may be uh, concurrent usage of the same parcel of land, for example, a, a cattle station or a sheep station and a coal mine, where the, the area that the coal mine or the gas mine or any other industry, but in this case, this specifically refers to coal mines, is not separated onto a separate parcel of land, um, which, which applies at the tourist facility. Um, there were a number of examples that I won't necessarily named, but of, of properties that undertake tourism-related activities alongside their grazing activities. So which one is the program? Anyone want a question or have any discussion further about that particular issue? Does that provide some degree of explanation around that for councils? In the absence of any discussion, I'll put it to the vote, please. Those in favour of those rate categories being adopted, 7-0. Okay, <clears throat> we now take those rate categories and apply the levy. So, I bear it, just want to point out for councillors, the, the levy in, in the instance of a lot of our uh, urban township uh, is often not it's the subsequent resolution that goes to the minimum rate um, that, that is often the most relevant apart from the town of Park Hall. So uh, outside of the those, the rates will be as they stand. Got a conversation, discussion about these? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, the only question or query I had, category 26, is that a rounding issue or should they from 21 to 26 will be the same. Yes, Mr. Mayor, it's just a rounding issue on the So that needs to be amended to 1.4. Yes, you're happy for that to be amended before we move, so you don't have to move an amendment to this document. So, item 26, category 26 will change to 1418. Okay. Do I have a mover? Councillor Arthur, a seconder. 
Councillor Plum, formal debate. Those in favour, 7 0. Minimum general rates. Sarman, would you like to lead through the methodology here that's encountered Lead Council through the methodology that uh, arrived in the increases in the. You know, I'm looking predominantly here at categories one to five. We've seen that you, how you selected that, or how we, how you arrived at that position. To you, Mr. Mayor. So, Council has you all agreed to five percent increase in overall general rates. To achieve five percent general rates, we had to select a median increase through each time. Which has is councils I just think it's very important. Sorry, while Simon brings this up, this because there is a nuance here. The percentage is different slightly when you look at these figures, and I've had a couple of you ask me about this. I think it's very clear, very important that you understand the methodology that's arrived to this. I think it's. From my understanding of the explanation at the workshop, it's very sound methodology, but it's it's important that you comprehend this because you may be asked about this. This is this would be one of the few pinch points of the budget that I think uh, you you may be approached about from ratepayers. So I think it's if you just particularly pay attention to this bit because it will impact the vast majority of our ratepayers, urban ratepayers. So I'm happy to sorry, sorry, man. I know you've got this though because you showed us last time. Yes, Mr. Mayor. So so we have a general minimum minimum increase throughout each community, each town of twenty eight dollars. Which so that's consistent. That is consistent for all five <coughs> towns. And that to choose that minimum general increase was to was created through a median where some towns uh, <coughs> So it caused a difference of about one point five dollars for the for towns like Armagh and Delco and and Barky. So was paying about three dollars over this, right? So to to achieve a bottom line of five percent overall increase from last year's rates, I had to increase in all towns by us. Uniform dollars. Okay. So, councillors, there's a there's a very nuanced methodology change in what we do to achieve a five percent increase or eight percentage increase. I think the way the finance manager's done this, as opposed to previously, when we calculated increase, the increase was applied to the rate. Whereas here, council did, and, and some is very correct. Some <coughs> we we said we need to achieve a five percent overall rate take increase. So to get that 5%, the median prices that have then been calculated then had to be brought back to a consistent figure, which is then consistent with previous years where every town's minimum base does go up. But how we arrived at the $28 this year, as opposed to previous years, the, 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 uh, the, ca the calculation methodology has been an average of what 5% is of each of the minimum rates. So that's the change. Instead of averaging 5% minimum rate increase, we've identified what is 5% of the total rate take and what is the dollar figure that would need to be applied. So it's still consistent. It's $28 per rate card per town that the minimum is increased, but that uh, changes the percentage because $28 as, as a percentage of 470 is substantially more than $28 as a percentage of 550, for example, 549. So uh, the, the percentage, if you just look at those two that are on screen there for Alpha and Aramac, 
actual percentage increase in the minimum rate is different because the base rate is different. But the overall rate take, the methodology that SAMAD's used is, Council wants 5% more in general rate revenue. How do I achieve that unif with uniform rather than breaking each township up into different categories and having a minimum rate rise in one town of $35 or I think it was, was over 30 and another town of only 26. And so this way, every town pays not the same amount, but he's paying the same amount more. That's a fair analogy. Uh, fair. Yes, Mr. Mayor. And then communities like Jericho, Montebar and Aramac, they pay the minimum channel rate throughout their communities through per rate pay. So, <coughs> the, yeah, the impact is, is about $2 to the community with the minimum general rate and and yes, it, it's it's like a median, so it's either way is two dollars to achieve that twenty eight and the bottom line comes to five point zero general rate increase for the council region. With that I'll go to questions now please with that explanation. Three Mr Mayor. So what about the other so what did you apply to all the others? So five towns were twenty-eight dollars, like just to make that an even five percent, but like it would be five percent over what about rural and um, public and multi-industrial and like did you do the same thing with those SAMAD? Like how did you look? Or were they just per per rateable? Or oh, for you Mr Mayor. For the for five towns and rural residential, so which is one to yeah. category six, all were applied twenty eight dollars minimum general increase, yeah. which is and whereas on category eight, all area, all rural areas, we've applied uh, twenty five dollars minimum increase, which is five dollars, uh, which is five percent of the general rate increase, so. And all other categories are also around 5%. It's just to achieve that bottom line of 5%, I had to do that median for those for town areas and rural residential. So if we could just explain that point very clearly. So if you go back a resolution, the cents in the dollar rate for category 8, rural, 0.612, that is a flat 5% increase year on year. So that the overall but this resolution deals with the minimum, the one we're dealing with right now. The one we've just adopted is the actual valuation and they have increased across the board by 5%. It's just that to achieve the total rate take, the minimums needed adjusting by a percentage to ensure because there's such a substantial portion of non-rural rates that fall into that minimum category that there had to be an adjustment to them or otherwise their rate take would fill under that 5%. So there wouldn't be too many on that category eight, but it's increased by twenty five dollars. Is that what you're saying, Simon? Yes, Mr. which is five percent. Thank you, Simon. Councillors. Okay. Sorry, sorry, to bore you. If we have with that, okay. but that's there's a there's a very delicate, nuanced change there. I'm not suggesting either methodology is wrong. This methodology makes sure that council's total rate does increase. Like, <clears throat> the reason you increase rates is because you've got expenses or, or decisions to make with money. So if you say you need 5% more, this is how you get it. The other way, you're charging 5% more. This way, you're receiving 5% more in total. And the minimum here is being affected and, and there is a percentage difference between all five towns. As councillors have pointed out to me privately, I'm aware of that. Uh, but I just needed you to understand it wasn't that there was there was no re um, sorry, there's quite substantial reasoning at some age just given it to you, it, but it wasn't done on a basis of anything other than achieving a median price rise to keep a consistent minimum dollar increase across the council area. We were there was no the finance team didn't sit out and pick well that town can pay twenty eight more in this one. It was done on <coughs> On a, on a mold basis. On a uniformity basis, Mr. Mayor. 
just to achieve the bottom line results and keep it medium to the tongues. In that case, can I have somebody move that we apply the minimum general rates as is set out in that table? Councillor Arthur, Councillor Police, in seconds this one, please. Formal debate. Those in favour? Against? 7 0. Uh, sorry, three, Mr. Mayor. Just back to the previous point, I have another question. Sorry, previous item. I have another question that I've missed. Category 64 and 65, intensive accommodation D and E, are the same cents in the dollar, whereas there's a progression from A to F otherwise. But I see in the item that we just discussed that the minimum increases. I just was wondering if, again, that's a, is that meant to be that way or is that? Because from A to B, there's a, say, 0 0.7 jump, 0 0.65 jump. Stand by, Council. I'll check last year's. I'll assume you're on to it. And then D to E doesn't jump, and then there's a, a considerable jump from E to E. Previous year it was still the same. No, it is too. There's no jump from there. There's no movement. Yeah. Sorry, is that intentional or is it just? I don't know. I'm just picking. Oh, I've not picked it up in the no, I mean, yeah, budget deliberations earlier either. But can we just yeah. go to the category definition and see what the is no, there? I, a I mean, it's 400 to 500 beds. Yeah. So you're 250 to 400, and the other one's 400 to, to 500. And then over that is greater than 500, so that would be 5,000. Uh, it doesn't seem to have affected the, like the minimums progress from A to F. I just, yeah, I don't know whether it's just... Uh, it looks because we probably don't have that yeah, in our ratings, yeah. it's not it's ever a, come up. Not yet. Well, that's, yeah. Um, councillors, can I suggest it looks to me for very rudimentary first glance, they're going up, so the, the first step is up by 0.5, the next one's by 0.6, the next one's by 0.8, then there's flat, and then there's a whole point. Uh, I think, given this historical, we haven't had the discussion about this particular issue, we need to drill into the why. We could move to amend this should council be of a mind to that particular rate category, or is it? Is that officers oh, that become difficult? If which it does, doesn't it? Once you the rates, you can't change it after that. Well, this rating category, Mr. Mayor, this, Mr. Mayor, this rating category doesn't affect them. Not currently. Not at yeah, at this stage. At but should the March development, which is already approved in Alpha, kick off, then it would fit into E. Bond size, it's 250 to 400. Well, it's 450 actually, sorry, so it's the one above that. Well, there's a significant increase, Mr. May, in the minimum general rate, but the, yeah, not sure about the rate in the cent. Yeah, there's 50,000 increase. That, that's what I mean, the, the minimums jump, but the cents in the dollar, it doesn't seem to correlate, but there's a, a bit of a disconnect there. Like 80,000, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Tori. Yeah. <coughs> Just want to give you a bit of a What you looking at the How far can we go? You're looking at the minimal budget scale. Yeah, yeah sense in the dollar. We get it jump yeah. from what touch? Three, five, nine, nine, three, four, nine, 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 if you went to 3.92, that's about halfway from category 
D to category F. Well, it is halfway. Which is, about, which is roughly consistent in a very non-mathematical way with the list from A to B to B to C, C to D. Park that while you think about it. We've got 19 more resolutions to go. You can seek to amend this later in the day. Uh, a lot more than 19. But I do think if you want to change that, you should do it today because otherwise you're really 12 months away. Once this is set up in the system, once the rates are issued, even though we're not rating any of those properties yet, it would still be problematic to retrospectively introduce a new rating category or a change of rate code. So there's a, I think the middle ground here would be if that went to 392 for category 65. I will let you have a think about that over morning tea. Which is not now, for those of you who are hungry. And Mr. Mayor, apologies for not bringing it up That's okay. in the item. I did pause, but we all missed it, so we all need, don't you be sorry, you're the only one who still picked it up. And it looks like it's been missed for more than one year. Sewerage charges. So I made the increment, this is agenda item 315, page 17. So I made the increase here. Uh, well, sorry, I'll point out one difference. We've changed the pedestal charge for additional pedestals from where it was kicked in at the second, that has now changed. It doesn't kick in until the third. Uh, there's a number of reasons for that. Predominantly not to penalise businesses uh, who predominantly may not be accommodation but have two toilets for either disabled or um, male, female or children. So a, there was a number of reasons the council has discussed. Uh, and I believe council supports that increase so that the additional pedestal charge will only be triggered at the third pedestal. So the $726 is consistent with two, which, which used to be applied to one pedestal, now covers those with two. And it also probably makes a better reflection on what is currently being applied in this case anyway, because of the lack of knowledge unless they have come through us. So I mean, uh, the percentage increase here. It's a standard, uh, it's 2% increase here, Mr. Mayor, uh, in this area, from um, 710 last year to $710 to $726, and, and the others are also respectively 2% increase. And an increasing our revenue in this um, section of the budget by 2% is the um, material presented further on in the operational side of the budget. Uh, reflecting that this 2% increase will still keep us cash positive, or sorry, um, revenue positive over expenditure and depreciation. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Second time in history, councillors, two years in a row if that happens. It's a seismic change in budget repair if you adopt this, I think, mean, 2%. Given the pain that our residents, sorry, Simon? Yes, Mr. Mayor, it's a positive uh, net for sewerage for this year. Yes. And that figure is? $35,000. Thank you. And that's after depreciation? After depreciation, after interest, and after any special operating you've decided. Yes. Uh, we asked ratepayers to take a big hit last year. There was a, there was a, a very large percentage increase. Um, this year we've now asked, which rectified uh, the budget deficit that had been happening in this core area of business um, for decades. Uh, they fixed that in one year. We now just asked them to keep pace with 2%. Um, in fact, 2% in the current climate may not even be keeping pace, but there is, there is a bit of uh, excess in the budget, as we're hearing, um, that should our costs slightly adjust. We would hope, uh, with an agenda item uh, following the budget today, at some point in the distant, in the not too distant future, to start to realise some operational savings through improved SCADA and telemetry, um, but until that system's been operating, we're not going to really see that quickly. That's going to take probably 12 or 18 months to bed down, but that will certainly hopefully improve our operating. Do I have a mover? People's Councillor Bibbles and Councillor Hanson seconds debate. <coughs> All those in favour? Seven zero. Councillors, bear with me. I mean, I'm teased through this because it's not only you, you we, all of us have all heard a lot of these reasons, but this is our public meeting. Someone may be interested as to why our charges are moving, so I'm trying to give 
some sort of a explanation to the resolution as they're presented. Waste, I'm going to ask the same question, so I'm at uh, the increase here. Uh, the similar standard increase, Mr. Mayor, two percent. Two percent. And could you please show me uh, the check the projections for the uh, the I know it's in further, but I'm just trying to link it to these resolutions because there's no good receiving them but adopting that report later and then having to go back and change this. Uh, that the uh, that the cost centre for waste charges is in surplus. Yes, Mr. Mayor, it's hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. Well, positive. Thank you. Uh, waste, once again, was another area of, of our business last year that we asked residents to undergo substantial um, cost increases. Uh, this 2%, once again, is asking them, you know, for 100,000. That's after we apply that special um, discount for wheelie bin purchases, that allocation of special maintenance. Special. Yes, Mr. Ever, yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, all elements have been covered in that. I'd suggest that sounds like a lot of money, but it, given the bit of work to be done around our um, uh, waste landfills in terms of beatification and compliance control, uh, there may, despite the best efforts of our councillors and officers preempting what might be needed, there may be some surprises during the year. So having a reserve of cash in that particular area uh, means that we may not slip into deficit. I would suggest and recommend we stay with the 2% increase as is presented. <coughs> Do I have a move up? Councillor Plum. I second up. Councillor Gleeson. Debate or question? Those in favour? 7 0. Water charges. <coughs> okay, so Matt, same series of questions. Sorry? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, for water, we've gone. To, uh, as per council, two percent increase, and that does to that cost centre of council leave us in a surplus position. Yes, Mr. Mayor, it's hundred and fifty-seven thousand dollars. What's the difference? Councillors, this has been a long-standing, well-performing element of council, um, uh, at least from a financial point of view. We certainly have had some issues around uh, water treatment facilities in Alpha at Jericho. Uh, however, we're fortunate in the position that currently those facilities are not needed in Matabara, Aramak or Barcoolan. Uh, we have had some uh, substantial Maintenance, extraordinary maintenance required of distribution networks in Barcaldon, and they are obviously are generational assets that have been replaced through through, through that. Um, unfortunately, not in the manner of an asset and maintenance program that the council would be overly comfortable with, but that, that is behind us, and we're hoping to move into better space as those asset management plans come online. If Notwithstanding that, and the extraordinary expense of SCADA and telemetry that um, is further referenced in this, we're still 157,000 that are off, then, then that means this business unit's still also proceeding pretty well, and, and ratepayers have not been asked in this year or any other year to cop a substantive increase in cost. Um, do I have a mover? Councillor Plum. A seconder is Councillor Hanson. Debate. Uh, Mr. Mayor, just through you, do we know, or are the fingers at hand, um, have we used our allocation or gone over, like generally or per town? Or, or, I would assume with the rain, the recent widespread rain, <coughs> we probably, yes, our cost <coughs> has, has dropped a fair bit. What's coincided, yeah, I don't know, to preempt the answer is that no one would have them to hand just yet. How difficult are they to get? Um, Mr. Mayor, um, I believe probably near that for you. So Mr. Mayor, it's probably a yeah, question on notice for later yeah, on. Yeah, if we can just see like what our annual usage is. Yeah. The the thing that has coincided obviously with the wet season, councillor, is is uh, the fact that the the changing relationship between our life, our, our temporary allocation of the Ergon yeah. law and the chop to a more substantive portion of town licence now being used for the rec park. So um, whilst I think you're correct, without even looking at the figures, I'd be almost certain 
domestic usage, even council usage outside of the rec park in Barcoolman would have dropped in all five communities. But that slack may have been eaten by the percentage of water that we needed to pop up now at the rec park. Not, not, I'm not suggesting we're outside our licence, but it, it may not leave the the excess that would have historically been there in a wet, wet season. So it will be very interesting to see those figures. And the fact that the rec park is needed separately, we will be able to tease it out very, very simply without having to break down. We'll be able to know, well, it's all of Buck Alden minus the rec park plus the rec park and what it is, and then conversely go to our smaller communities and see the same figures. And especially over the next couple of years, Mr Mayor, with our recycled water coming online for use over here to free up, yeah, I mean, or better use of, of the allocation that we've got, or a review of our allocations. I think I think we were fortunate that we had that wet, even though we did have that pretty hot weather. Mm. Um, to be fair, through summer I've seen worse, and we had anticipated when we handed down last year's budget that the sewerage treatment plant upgrade would have been completed in time for some utilisation of that water through summer, and obviously due to the uh, COVID-induced stress on the supply chain. That's still a WIP, but um, uh, it is getting closer. Um, so we would hope to work once again. We end up that another decreased, another decrease in the allocation from the urban war appears in this this year's coming. So we really and it is substantive. So we're very hopeful um, to see some serious movement with the utilisation of treated water yep. in town green spaces. And sporting facilities before we have to encounter another summer because it could that could place some real stress on staying within our cap. Yep. We'll see a uh, report on that for the July meeting or perhaps our session if it becomes available for the full year. Further comments on water? Those in favour? Seven zero. He's first no, so he's, he's just looking for the training we've got going on. His really first, got first day of induction could be to come and present to council all his plans. <laughs> Save <laughs> a million dollars a year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he probably turned his well, paid in. He's first looking to the town hall, but it's in a training room. Oh, it's in, yeah, it is. Yeah. All right. Uh, this one speaks for itself, councillors, um, unless you have a question. Uh, this one's pro forma. Those in favour. Oh, sorry, those to move on. Council of People seconded. Council of Plum. Debate. Those in favour? 7 0. Uh, this is also, um, with the exception of Section C, relatively straightforward. These dates have been selected by officers with an operational consideration to ensure that public holidays, where possible, can be avoided, and the days of the week that have uh, a number of our ratepayers have had issue with, I think have been to the best of their ability selected. Is that right, Paula? So, Mr. Mayor. The dates chosen on Wednesdays, we should not do and yeah. Okay, um, councillors, 10% discount, that's consistent with uh, Massive historical precedent within this council. Has she got a mind to change it? Do I have a mover? Councillor Hanson, Councillor Arthur seconds. Those in favour? Carried 7 0. That's the maximum that's listed there in A. Unfortunately, I wish it could be higher, but it isn't. Do I have a mover? Councillor People, second to Councillor Arthur. Debate? Those in favour? 7 0. Arthur. Rates concessions for pensioners, consistent at 30%. Eligibility is as is itemised in 0.6 of the recommendation. Do I have a mover? Councillor Hanson, second to Councillor Plum. Debate. Those in favour? 7 0.
rates concession, full rebate uh, will be applied for this. For the item, for those assessment numbers listed in the table, because on the basis of them being identified not-for-profit organisations that you endorse. Is there any questions about any of those people that are on there or, or properties that are on there that, or are not on there? Do I have a mover? Councillor Plum, seconder. Councillor Rogers, debate. Does anyone wish to slow down and just go through them a little bit, just clarify exactly what we've got there? Those in favour? Seven against? Seven zero. This table deals with the concessions that we give to those and others, those and others on the basis of them being, that they being not for profit, non for profit. Sorry, I'll say that again, non-profit organisations. That concession is 50% of water charges. Uh, just on a technical level, so do they build 25% a quarter or do they just pay half a water charge on one bill? Oh, I'm not sure what to 50% each rate. We just cut it in half, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good. And they've never had a problem with that, managing that in a cash flow sense that works well. Do I have a mover? That's all plumb. Seconded. That's a lot of people's debate. So, yeah, Mr. The resolution here, sorry, Councillor Arthur, the resolution here says non profit. Should it say non profit and religious or what? Is a religious organisation declared a non profit? Aren't they? Teased out separately in the Act? There's general, there's general rate exemptions where they will be categorised as religious in the next uh, resolution. That's right for the general rating. So we separate, that's why I asked, because we have a table for non profit organisations, which was 3112. Then we have another one for 314 for religious organisations or showgrounds or horse racing. I just wonder if we should amend. It doesn't give an explanation. I wonder if we amend this resolution with your permission, Councillor Plum, that we just grant a concession of 50% of water charges for the financial year end of 30 June for the following assessment notices because they're not all non profits, are they? Would I be correct, Jenny? And some of them not like they're not non profits by the pure definition, are they, or are they not? Does anyone have an opinion? Yeah. No, well, I, yeah, well, that'd be right because when you look at some of those churches, they run schools and everything, not just not in Barcaldine, but as a collective, and a lot of those would be paid from what well, you see the diocese of Rockhamptons and stuff, so they're paid from bigger up. So, yeah, I think I'd agree that it would be for the following groups and organisations. Would that resolution be at order though for the following assessment notice? No, it can't hurt because you're just stating what's on there. Yeah. Councillor Plum and Peebles, are you happy with that amendment? Yes. Right, sorry, Councillor Arthur, I interrupted you again. That's the third No, through you, Mr. Mayor, my question was similar why they don't, the two lists don't correlate. Um, and then following items have different. Different. Items again. Yeah. Not everything, not every entity is on. The same list for a for a rates concession in different areas. I think the reason these reports are presented this way is historically the officers have devised them from using different exemption categories under the Act. Yeah, this this has to be historical. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Right. Have we put that to the vote? No. We have not. You want to so read word? So. Oh, sorry, we did. I did. You did, did change it yeah, to the following <coughs> session notices. Those in favour? 7 0. 3 1 4. We've jumped ahead here, but. and discussed this already. But, do anyone have any problems? Does any council wish to discuss, discuss the inclusion or lack of inclusion of any assessment notice here? 
of a mover. Councillor Plum, a seconder. Councillor Hanson, debate. Those in favour. Can you hear me? Ah, yes, Councillor. Is that the council exempt from differential rates? That is a hundred percent. Yes, that is. <coughs> yes. Just a hundred percent exemption from rates, not services. Not services. No. So they pay full sewerage, and some of those will pay fifty percent of their water. Separate resolutions, but this particular resolution only deals with that genuine differential rating category, which is a big table we looked at earlier. You're happy with that? Okay, I'll put it to the vote. Those in favour? 7 0. <sighs> Pest animal boundaries. Moved. <laughs> Councillor Plum, seconded. Councillor Anderson, debate. Those in favour? Harry, 7 0. Right, register of commercial, statutory and cost recovery fees. With your leave, <coughs> councillors, uh, we need a discussion to ensue regarding properties, several pages in, specifically the section that deals with council housing. So I'll let you all find that. Page 11 of 13 of this particular report. <coughs> I'm not sure what page of the agenda, I'm sorry. Page 50. Two. Two or three, sorry, yeah. 52. It has a orange head up properties. We never really need, we have, we've landed on something, but it's something different at each workshop. Substantially different or minorly different, doesn't matter. Um, I think we're all in agreement if we look at the bottom of that, where houses, council owned houses or council managed houses are rented to government. Um, those increases are there and real. I don't think there's any council at present would object to them. The, the difference here has been the public utilisation of council houses and the disparity between that fee and the fee that our employees pay, plus, plus whether <coughs> even the fee for council houses for employees is high enough or too high. So there's probably three issues here. I'm, it'll be one of these things, it's one of the smallest revenue slash it's not the smallest expense area of our budget by country mall it's it's a major cost but the movement here is relatively <coughs> minor yet i'm sure it will invoke some debate especially now i'm drawing it all your attention just I, I wonder if we have a good enough if we've discussed the impact and and received enough of an impact statement or an impact understanding of what the substantial movement in council houses to the public at that charge will have on current users. And whether we need some time, we've proposed some, that's done some extensive work on, on housing rental over a four year period, moving that to 
a higher level, which may have some very direct relevance for, for houses in a couple of communities, and it may also be substantial overs in other communities. However, one thing it does do is increase our revenue so that we can offset our expenditure, which is the job of the finance officer, the job of the <coughs> politicians in the room, is to make a cost-benefit analysis on whether the cost of that, or the benefit of that outweighs the cost. I'm not personally convinced we have enough of an understanding about what these houses that we rent to the public uh, impact it will have those relatively substantial year-on-year -year movements. Um, I'm wondering whether council would see fit to charge the employee slash public consistent fee, whatever that may be, and we come to a more formal policy position on the role of us renting houses and, and identify are these genuine low income earners, people undergoing financial stress, um, and therefore glean some sort of policy around cost recovery in an appropriate mechanism without necessarily uh, causing undue financial distress to people with pretty well no prior warning. Uh, my mantra has always been we <coughs> foreshadow shocks in the budget. I have done that around rates. Uh, because we've moved our targets a bit on this, I'm not convinced that there's enough people out there who have an understanding of where about what we may be about to do to, to their house rents. Now that's my position, um, but I will be guided by you councillors. I just wanted to really bring that out and, uh, and we have a forthright discussion on it because it does have um, cost of living, uh, it will have impact on their cost of living. Um, but likewise, it will also have a detrimental impact if we wind these figures back on council's revenue. So I'm not agnostic to that, um, or ambivalent to that, sorry, but I just will throw it out there. Councillors, Councillor Peoples, you were ready to speak there a while ago. Oh, Mr. Mayor, I'm concerned that we've raised these two from 150 to 194, I'm looking at a three bedroom home. The public. Um, overall, that's a lot of bigger percentage increase that we're, we're putting to those people that are uh, renting our public houses. I know a fair few people in those public houses will struggle to meet that $194 to the extent that I think they'll look for another house in our immediate way. It won't speak for other towns. And some of those people that we're probably going to create this burden for that they will seek for another house. I don't think we as a council want to uh, be in the public eye that the increase that we've put on these residents has forced people out. I think that the $150 we were charging is probably enough for a house. You know, it's uh, getting to $194, we are getting close to 10 grand a year for a house. It's, it's getting up there a little community like ours. Um, and I, I'm, I'm sure that we're going to put some people out of those houses. If we have a look at the last federal election, and one of the <coughs> biggest things that come out of that election, and one of the biggest issues, was the, um, the cost of living. And at a state and federal level, there's been a, a lot of public comment about how state and federal government can help with the cost of living. And here we are probably going to bump out our own rentals up far more than we're bumping everything up quite across our, our own budget. So I'd like to see them to stay where they are, Mr. at least. Or we'll, we'll stay at, right, okay, we'll come back. Councillor Gleeson. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to, um, I'd like to see the, the council employees and public be charged the same. Um, we want people to live in our towns. We want to encourage people to live in our town, so I don't. I really don't see the the, the need to over. Well, it's not necessarily overcharging, but I don't need. Uh, yeah, we need people living in our towns. Um, <coughs> Council of Peoples, when you said leave it the same, you meant? Did you mean leave the the the, the public and the employees the same, or did you mean to leave it the same as what it was last year? I'm saying well. Leave them the same as last year, but I'm, I'm open to suggestions there from my co-councillors. I'll listen to all the arguments there. 
finish off, Mr. Mr. Mayor, um, as much as we don't appreciate it, as much as we don't want to do it, everything has got to go up. So my argument towards it is employees and public to be similar. Similar or the same? On the, on the suggested increase that's in this year's fee, you're suggesting that council houses to the public be at the council houses to the employee level, which is about 10% up on last year. Is that right? Yes, yes, Mr. Mayor. For council houses, council employees, we've raised it to 10%. So they go to 160, sorry, 135 for a three bedroom house. And the public housing has gone up about 23%. Well, Mr. Mr. Mayor, we weren't following the percentage on the public houses. We were trying to achieve market trend in the next four years. Yeah, they worked out what figure they wanted to get and divided it by four. <coughs> but yes, your, your maths is right, but that wasn't the methodology used. It was where do we end up and how do we get there in a sustainable method or the most sustainable method possible. Mm -hmm. Councillor Hanson. Three, Mr. Mayor, I think because most of these houses are in the smaller communities, I'd be inclined to sort of go with the public housing at the same price as employees, but have that great with books out there. But I just ask, will that actually be a decrease on what they're currently paying? Because a three bedroom house currently around 150 something dollars <coughs> fifty per week. So if you go to the, what the employees are paying at 135, we'll actually be cutting 15, 14, 16 dollars or 26 dollars a week off. Just putting it out there, I'm not using that to further an argument, I'm just saying if we go to the same as what we're proposing because council houses currently are on unders to the public. So if you go to the methodology that council and lease is using where it's the same, there'll be a slight dip for those people. Would you maybe be comfortable with that's up to you to work out. Think about the figures. We haven't got to go around other councillors here. Councillor Art. Uh, Mr Mayor, each of our properties would have a lease in place. So some of these charges may take effect in August or would that be correct? Sure, Mr Mayor, they all take effect in October the 1st. Right. They all have lease agreements in place but there's, there's a room to move there. Yeah, as long as so there's a the review point. date for yeah. rental increase? We do all through the RTA. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I agree, Mr. Mayor. I think we need to establish a housing policy and include, yeah, whether we use it as a recruitment and retention tool for our employees, what our position on supplying low cost public housing or general public housing. Um, although there will be members of the community that do feel it in the back pocket on comfortable enough at the moment to go with that as it is um, but, but I think yeah we need to do some serious work over the next 12 months to, um, to, to better settle on our position with whether it's new housing, selling the housing that we have what we're doing with it. Um, all, all I see it as we are providing a community service and it's costing a lot of money to, to keep some of that housing and to keep it maintained. Um, it's just how much of a community service we're <coughs> happy to foot in the absence of state and federal housing. Um, I think there probably is a a need to have a, a, a differential rate maybe for the four smaller towns compared to, to Barcourt just because of economic pressure and available income and the socio-economic demographics um, and market reality and, and, and market reality well, I, I, at the moment you can rent a house in Barcourt for five or six hundred dollars a week which I think is ridiculous um, and if you were to say that in Marlborough or Jericho, someone would... Stone? Yeah. Or well, think you were stone? Yeah. Or a bit of both. What's to do good to go with me now? Look at this, you first day on the job and you've let me do that already. Um, what word are you going to send me in? But yeah, I think there's some policy work. 
over the next 12 months for us all to, to try and see what we can best do for our communities. Thank you. Um, so where I'm at with that is Councillor Arthur's happy to see it as is presented yep. but want to work on policy. Councillor Plum. Uh, Mr Mayor, um, do we have two scenarios here um, with uh, our council houses and the public? Um, are we talking about our employees in, or are we talking about public? If we're talking about public that are doing our council houses, then they, and they're on a low income, they'll get rent assistance. So they're going to only have to pay half of that. What, what in your mind is the criteria for rental assistance, not pensioners? So pensioners have totally different, yeah. different department altogether. Just a genuine non-pension low income. Yeah. So they will get rental assistance for that. So they're really not paying that for now. I wasn't aware of the rental assistance. Being no, I'm not. Councillor I'm not aware of that either. Not uniform. Not. I think there are examples of people on certain family benefits or perhaps some hardship entitlements who do. I, I didn't think it was just uniform. A defined low income person automatically receiving rental assistance. I, I'll, I'll, I'll take your word, but I'm, I'm not aware of a scheme that does that. I am certainly for pensioners yep. and for disability, um, yep. but not for genuine and across the board. But if you're a low-income person, you've got rental assistance. Okay, um, so... But, and I just thought that, you know, um, that's the case, then they're only paying percentage of their um, rent. I think okay. your point you make there, Councillor, you may be very valid, but I don't know, and I'm not sure we all, that's why I'm suggesting I don't know enough about the impact of a movement to, to, to validate it until I need, like, if every single genuinely defined low income person on low income support, but not everybody would be on that. They might just genuinely, like me, what you or I define low income, they're on a small wage, or on a part time small wage, so are they even qualified? Do they? Did they put their hand up and ask for the hand out? That, that, that's the, maybe they all do. Maybe they do, I don't know. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. So, that was my but if they do, Councillor, you, you're comfortable with the fees as presented? Well, notwithstanding whether they do or not, you're <coughs> Yeah, Yeah, I am, because we have to uh, cover our maintenance on those buildings. Thank you. Councillor Wright. First question. The council houses, have they all been, been bought into parity? Because weren't, didn't we have different prices for different towns? It was an option we looked at, so and, I mean. And now they've been all bought into parity, they're all the same in every town. Is that what this is saying? Well, we were, through you Mr May, we were, we were having that option to be considered, but then we went with that 10% increase in the last budget meeting. Yeah, so, so now it's just been brought. And agreed to public and government houses. Yeah. And so, <coughs> what was the, I can't, that mean the last one, but does that mean that some houses have gone up and some have gone down? No, not yet. In Bar, like, oh. with, so the house, the council houses in Barky were more expensive to rent than they were in Jericho or Aramac. And now, They've been brought, so Aramac has been brought up a bit. Has Barkey been brought down a bit? Like, so they are. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I don't think we had differential planning in the different towns. It was more so based on the renter, not the location. Yeah. With, through, through you, Mr. Mayor, with the, with the assessment we did, we didn't consider as per towns. So in the last budget meeting when we were thinking of going down that way to assess it through towns, but then we agreed to a flat 10% rate to bring up, uh, to have uniformity in all towns. Yeah, thank you. And the public rental, like when we're saying public rental, that means that is just for the private market, or is it, are we, keeping those houses for people have to prove that they have a low income to be able to rent those houses 
or it could be any person that wants to rent the houses. Anyone? Yeah. So, and your position? Well, you know, there's low income earners in every town. Like, I know Councillor Arthur was saying that there are different democratic, demographics. Like, there are low income earners in every one of the towns. So, I, I just, um, I don't know. There's a minimum wage too, so. What do you class as a low income? Is that person who is on welfare or is it? I, I'm happy with what's here, but I think we need to work on policy, like you said. Okay. I, I would like to say that, like people, like people who live in Aramac or Jericho or anywhere else live there because they really like living there and they love it there. It's not a disadvantage to live in Aramac or Jericho. Like, you live there because you, you like that lifestyle. And there's a minimum wage. All employees um, at the council earn the same no matter where they live. So I, I think that's fine there as it is. Um, to close out, I'm wary of hand, Councillor Police, I'm sorry. Um, just just uh, to close it out, I don't think it's a disincentive to live in any one of our communities. I do think that there are some incentives to live there and affordability in, in where we can keep fees and charges low. I think water, for example, water charges in this council area uh, are keeping pace with our costs, but they're by no means expensive when compared to other regional centres or even other rural centres. So we, we try to provide a livability framework that uh, whether some people view it as attractive or from a retention point of view or attractive from an advertising point of view and I think rentals is a, is a nuance there is a difference not everyone has access if we had like some of the burgs in or the boroughs in New York or, or you know places in Middlesex um, massive quantities of council owned housing and you know um, everyone that wanted one could get one uh, it would be, be a different conversation i certainly am aware of the sensitivities around where some people may be perceived to be getting rent or from a council property and that somehow generates some financial favor the problem is in, in communities <coughs> such as jericho and marlborough and aramac i'm not aware personally of a massive private rental market to compete with council. There certainly is a, a, a market of sorts in Alpha, and as Councillor Arthur suggested, there's an extremely overheated rental market um, or even short-term leasing market here in Bark Alden. But I agree with Councillor Arthur, it's madness. It, it's, it's built on a false economy. It's not built on a sustainable matrix. and us feeding into that by thinking that we can lift by 20% in a year where power bills will skyrocket. I, I just think it's a bridge too far. I don't want to pull anyone back. Uh, I, 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 I disagree with discounting um, uh, the rates that they're currently paying. Um, we've lifted the rate 10% for our council employees, which probably plays a bit of catch up on previous years. Bearing in mind, inflation's at 5%, so they're copying a 5% hit with everything they buy, and then we give them 10%. But I still think in a dollars per week basis, we can justify that and, and work with anyone who undergoes rental stress. But I think that I'd like to see the separate category retained um, and an increase of 10% year on year apply, um, which would move them, um, ironically, exactly in line with what council houses are are being rented for, but I think a little bit more for a three bedroom, you'd be moving to 165, which is 135. So that'd be hitting a $15. My suggestion will be that we move that by 10%. John, I was just gonna throw massive amounts of work at Sarmad to change at this hour, but it's a political decision that needs to be made. So um, we don't have consensus anywhere around the room yet on anything, but I'll, 
because I'm speaking last and first, I'll throw an option in front of you that we retain the separate category for council houses rented to the public, but instead of applying the uh, model increase, uh, which I uh, thank the team for doing the work on because their job is to save us money, but in this case, I'm prepared to hit propose 10%, which is in line with what we've lifted our council house employees category by. Is there any more spread debate or support? But I will, while you're thinking about my suggestion, go to Council of Gleeson and have his hand up. Thank you, Mr Mayor. No, I was just, did, I know that we've all done a few sums, but just glancing at the um, a three bedroom home for a council employee has gone up by $624 a year. A well, public person in, a, in that house is two thousand two hundred ninety-eight dollars per year on in, what's presented increase on the that this is we're looking at at, at, at adopting this year. Um, yeah, an increase of, of six hundred and twenty-four against an increase of two thousand two hundred ninety-eight, which is I don't believe is fair. But in saying that, is um, is this scope? If in any charges, is there scope for those persons that may not be able to afford to come back to the council and um, and have a discussion? And, and is there is there room? Is there area legally? You know, or, or, or can we you assist? Yeah, no. yes. not wouldn't be normal. No, because then you you, know, you make a decision on how you make the decision. Have to look at their finances becomes very personal. Uh, okay, well, you've answered that. Thank you. I'm not in favour of increasing that by yeah employee six hundred and twenty four against a non employee two thousand two hundred and eighty eight. Um, I'm not in favour of that, but I'm more. Thank you. Three years to me. When you're saying um, you're saying to keep the top one. Same as is, and then this one. What's the percentage at the moment? So it's well. If you just want to list my suggestions, currently a one bedroom house is rented to the public for one hundred and two dollars, and we're if the proposal in front of us is one hundred and twenty nine. So I'd move that to around one hundred and twelve dollars. A two bedroom house, which is ten. So. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred and twenty three. So I'd propose moving that to around one hundred and thirty five, and a three bedroom house. Is 150 currently. I propose that we move that to 165. To Mr. Memo, just to add to what Councillor Crom said before, so I thought I'd do a little research. There is actually a national rental affordability scheme which people can check their eligibility in for low to medium income families, and the wage levels are quite high that people may be able to be eligible for rental assistance. So there is a scheme out there. Called NARS, NRAS, N R A S, they call it, and it's a Queensland government fund. Just for information. Um, did you, thank you, Jenny. Did you have a point further you wanted to make, or were you just trying to work out what those figures would be? Oh, I was just going to say, oh, that's four, no, sorry, four bedroom. Yeah, four bedroom. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. Yeah, it's four bedroom. So there was another conversation I wanted to have. Uh, not conversation, sorry, relay a conversation Samad and I had at his office after the last budget <coughs> workshop. And it goes to a point that was raised by an officer in that, that not all of our staff have access to housing because we don't have it in all of our towns or we don't have enough of it. It was a very valid point that was raised and we all get, we pay everybody the same and a resident in Buck Holden has to compete on that overly inflated pricing market, whereas we give a, some would say, generous uh, rental assistance through this to those employees that live in the towns where it's accessed. Now, all of our communities have got strengths and weaknesses, but there is, a, there is certainly some opportunity over, around a housing policy to also develop separately, SARMAD, a, uh, a salary sacrifice, a salary contribution um, that would allow improved benefits to employees who wish to choose. Could you perhaps explain in high level terms, now this, councillors, do not predicate that this conversation will result in operational change. There's a massive amount of work to go into this, but it, it does view the point that to try and achieve some consistency in our employees' accessibility to 
affordable housing, and there was an option here. So, so, so Mr. Mayor, I've had I did a bit of research on salary sacrificing, and that being out remote where we are in this region, we are uh, everyone's entitled to like remote housing allowances and salary sacrifice packaging stuff, which is which is which doesn't have FPT implications as well. So yeah, that's an option we can, employers who rent can consider under our ABA to do to, to salary sacrificing. And I think uh, last year we had to work it out with, uh, when Anna was our CEO, we had to we work it out that everyone is eligible to have salary, uh, salary sacrifice their rent or whatever it is that can be salary sacrificed like. So, yeah, rent is a rent is one of them. Yeah, I, I, that's right. To potentially include this with the housing policy could be removed. Although, can I just ask? Forgive my naivety, not being either a tax specialist or an accountant, but the benefit around salary sacrificing is received from the employee around minimising their tax tax liability. Is that correct? So, the gross salary pre-tax. So it's it's a pre-tax. Yeah. Right. So you're not taxed on the money. There's rules around Yeah. Okay, so there's just when we, because it, it's related to this, not in that it will help the people that pay this, although it may, but because there is the issue that's real about who has and who does not have access to council housing at this rate, as opposed to whatever this market rate is that's, you know, a floating figure within our communities. And I think. I'd be very keen to see options around that explored as we develop this housing policy, irrespective of your decision today in this space, because you could that that has a benefit to every employee potentially. Whereas a housing, unless we build houses in every town, and lots of them, has a bit of a pick the winner. One one more thing with that salary packaging thing is, Mr. Mayor, anyone who is renting a house from council would have more benefit in that. Than the ones who are renting privately as well. Because so they're already getting a discount and then they get a tax as so well. So they'll, they'll have 100% salary packaging benefit because if if your employee is owning a house and the lease is under their name, then like it's technicalities of it, but it helps more to people who are renting houses through their employees. So, yeah, yeah, I think we need to bring all that as a whole policy package to the council. Because, as you say, we need recruitment retention. We need to have parity across towns, but we also don't want to discriminate one town versus the other. So that'll come to the markets. We need to condition assess our houses as well to find out you know, value what the markets like for the condition of the house as well. So we need all of that in there. I just wanted to point, sorry, I'll come to you straight away. I just wanted everyone to hear the work that Sarmad's done on that because pretty well of his own battle or with other senior staff, but we hadn't heard a discussion around that because it's still in the immature stages and I'm sorry to drag it out in a budget meeting, but I'm not sorry because it shows a considered approach to an issue that a district manager raised about the fact that it's not consistent and never will be in terms of access, but that has a potential to be really beneficial to all of our employees, council peoples. So a couple of things I'd like to point out. One is parity, and we talk about a lot. It's something I don't necessarily agree with, and... The reason I don't agree with it, I know we've all got our, our minimum wage and everything is all the same, but when you look at some of our smaller towns, the cost of living, like if you've got a young mother who wants to come to football, netball, dance, any of those sorts of things, say twice a week out here with their, their children, they're paying to come here because they haven't got that at home. There are a lot of costs to a lot of families in the smaller towns that we probably don't have here in Mark Hall. So. It's not so much that we, we've got a uh, parity with our wages, it's the cost that the small towns suffer so that they can give their kids a bit more and play a bit of sport or go to dance classes or come to see a doctor here, or go to catch a plane. They pay just to get there. That's where their cost of living goes up. The other point I'd like to make, Mr Mayor, is that I had a yarn with the Diamond team there and they've dropped all their rentals 15% this year. 
So there are other councils having a look at the, the problems with cost of living in that area. The salary sacrificing some, um, I'm pretty sure there's a lot more than rental. Or there's, cars. there's car um, tyres, you know, there's rego. There's because I, I know some people who that is really beneficial to every employee. So it's not just the employees that are renting houses, it's employees who have to do their cost of their cars, their you know, there's, a, there's a lot of things, so I'd be there's really happy to see what you can find that you could be eligible for out here, because that will be a real incentive for people to work for council. Yeah. We offer that. Yes, Mr. Mayor, that's that's right. Because living out remote, uh, there are other benefits too within that packaging, which do not impact FPD as well. So looking at that, yeah, we can we I can. We can like sort of <coughs> one thing I would say it all sounds great. I'm going to come in now with that because I still think it needs exploring. Just it may not be the fairy godmother for one reason, and the admin staff will know why. Administering it, you know, especially okay. So housing might be relatively simple to set it up, but where you involve cars. So I know BMA, for example, have got nearly 50 people managing the salary sacrifice program for their employees because the, you're right, all of the maintenance, the tyres, the standard fitting, all of that, it's pay on receipt. So managing that can be, so you, you may look at it and look at what is administratively the easiest for us to, otherwise we might be looking after the cars, payments and that sort of stuff. So it, it's, it's looking at what's the best return, factoring it into a package around retention. A lot of things are possible. What's the administrative cost? Yeah, yeah. to yes, us to yes, Mr. Mayor, clearly cause a, uh, some more heads in administrative cost. <coughs> Three years to that. that would be what we, we that'd be great to see that mm. we go through that. Yeah, no, totally agree. Um, we need to. I'm really enjoying the conversation. I could have talked all day with Council of Peoples about parity. Because uh, I, I both agree with him, but I also think that the parity then has the reverse because you live in a community that has perhaps access to the services that are suggested, the non council services, but then you have this ridiculously inflated price, um, too. So I, I, I could genuinely argue both sides of parity all day long, um, but I'm not going to, uh, and I'm not going to allow it. Um, uh, but I will ask for some resolution around, and, and I respect the point that you made, Councillor, I do, but, and it is relevant to this. But I think we can move back to where we want to land with this resolution. I've got three councillors that are happy to leave it as is. So it's up to what these three... I'm, I'm prepared to amend what's here, leaving the categories myself and, and applying a 10% increase to the public section. It's what you three councillors want to do. Well, Mr Mayor, I, I'm probably comfortable to go to the 10% increase in the council and the public stay on the same level, but I'd probably, in this year, probably prefer to see it the same as part, just leave it as it is. So 102, 123 and 150? Yes. Councillor of Gleeson. Councillor Hanson. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. I would agree with the 10% across both sides, Mr. Mayor. Council of Peoples, I'm going to ask you a very fortuitous question here, which you do not need to answer, but are you, if three councillors go 10% and the other three want to leave it as they are, are you going to vote to leave it as presented or go with 10%? Because I can't have a three-way voting. So the yes or no? Mm -hmm. It'll be the difference between 23% increase or 10% increase. Mm -hmm. That's the way the room's looking. You're saying flat line, the other councils don't. <coughs> There's no majority to leave it where it is. Three, Mr. Mayor, might be a mute point because I'll, I'll be happy to <coughs> go back to the 10%. <coughs> okay. In which case, then, okay, so you can vote against the 10% increase. I'm just trying to give you foreshadow where the resolution is going to go so that you can't vote a third option. We only have yes or no's. Yeah, okay. Right, so can we amend then, please, uh, the schedule for property housing? 
We need the correct maths. So $102. We'll move to $112. Yep. Do we round here? They're all zeros, so yes. $123, we'll move to $135. Is that right? Mr. Mayor? Uh, yes. As amended. <coughs> Sorry, <Sean. coughs> Okay. Yeah, so the That's what people's was. That's coming forward. Um, sorry. Do I have a mover for that? Oh, hang on. Is this only? That's the only section. Sorry, I can't. I preempted this and went to that. Does anyone else want to discuss any yeah. other section of it? it? Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Back to this issue. Is it a point or an item that we should maybe take up with the LGAQ? Just like with, with respect to Queensland local government salary sacrificing. Like, I'm sure almost every council area, if they can use it as a recruitment retention tool for their staff, <coughs> is it something that? Roll out and perhaps use. Oh well, well, for them to look at to see whether they can, like I know REM serve and that serve Queensland government. So, so maybe there's a capacity there for a business unit in LGAQ to deliver it, so that the the beneficiary pays a fee, and that work is taken away from individual councils. So there's not a increased administrative load. For fifty or hundred staff, whereas it's done centralised or regionalised. <coughs> yeah, so a lot of councils already, as well as have salary sacrificing in their packages. Yeah. LGAQ is currently working on housing with the state government yeah. and the federal, so that it may be all encompassing in that. Yeah. Um, certainly doesn't hurt us as we're developing housing policy to go to the LGAQ as well and say, "Look at this. And how can we piggyback on anything they're doing, or they take care of this?" Um, it's very hot topic everywhere across the state at the moment. Mind you, with the numbers, number of councils we have in Queensland, it could take Thank you. 50 years and still get no real consensus in what goes in and who does what. But there's a definitely a, an intense um, scrutiny at the moment on housing in population <coughs> homeless. <coughs> so even looking at the, the news media in the last two or three weeks, there's been an intense increase in that dialogue. I saw the LJQ CEO on TV on the news last night not before talking about housing and affordability, so it's, it's definitely a, a current topic. Thank you. So is that the resolution that we're amending with the charges to cover that? Sorry. Well, I'm sure some councillors aren't, but that's the rest. Of, that's what I wanted to amend it to. Yes, um, but other fees and charges because this is a holistic part of the document. It was not a substantial movement in this. Uh, oh, sorry, no, this is sorry. Word. Community facilities. So we'll park the debate on this part of the the formal debate on that bit that we've just discussed. Sorry, Councillor Arthur. To carry on with the housing, yep. the, the line below the properties council housing, community housing, housing rent calculator, but then it's per week input, no fee. But what is that? Sorry. On the fees and charges? Yeah. This one here. It was blank last year, blank the year before, and the year before that. Oh, is this for the old Department of... I think it's... it's I reckon, because it, it, it's a statutory fee, not a commercial fee, so it's set by law. Sorry, Sam, mate, you go, but I reckon Paula or Jenny will be able to add to this as well. I'm not sure, but I think it's to do with the care services community. Previous semester community housing, so um, 
we can go with their housing rent calculator, which will be on the market rent. But, um, we go, always go with the council rentals, basically. So there's a statutory fee there. There's a statutory provision to charge rent for community houses or charge councils. And historically, we've always used councils. But if we want to use the statutory fee, there's a set calculation that we have to use. And by including it as a line here, that authorises us to do that should we ever wish to. Okay. Does that explain properly? Oh, it, yes, but should, look, it, it's, if it's a statutory type of fee, what's the source? Market rentals, and usually a Brisbane market rental, so we don't have a yeah, but, but, but if it comes from a statutory, it comes from an act or public, public housing act or... It's coming from the communities. The or, yeah. Yep. Ah. So if we find where that is, can we just insert that act, that legal source in that call? Calculate that. Councillors, I'm going to adjourn for morning tea, and then we're going to discuss showgrounds.